Hello and welcome to the 3D Amateur channel. My name is Rob and today we're going to be looking at some of the practical uses of 3D printing at home. The main reason I wanted to get a 3D printer was to make things that I couldn't buy and I think this is true for a lot of 3D printing amateurs out there. However, the first thing I did when I got my 3D printer that I'm sure a lot of people also do was to improve it with a variety of 3D printed upgrades. This has two benefits in that it allows you to learn how to use your 3D printer and your slicer correctly, as well as learning about 3D printing in general. But what happens once you run out of upgrades to print? From my experience, most people turn to printing novelty items, things like this rather cool R2D2 Google Home Mini Holder, or little fun ornaments like these TIE Fighter kit cards. As fun as this is, it is not what I originally had in mind for my 3D printers, and then for the first time I had an opportunity to use my printer for a practical purpose. A friend and guest on the channel, Sam, also known as Jester Engineer on YouTube, had purchased a set of two Samsung 24 inch CRG50 monitors for his workstation that he wanted to use with a simple desk mount to save space. These monitors have a huge stand as you can see here, and he wanted to affix them to a stand at the back of his desk so that he could clear the desk up and make it a bit tidier. For some reason though, Samsung decided not to include a visa mounting option for these monitors, and so the hunt began. We scoured the internet for an adapter that would allow him to mount the monitors on a normal visa fitting, and we did find some solutions. One that used the part of the stand that is attached to the monitor to fit onto a plate that then had the visa fittings. This was around £30 per adapter though, and had to be imported from America, which would have cost almost as much as the mount again for shipping. This was not a viable option, but it was a good idea. We also found one that was 3D printed, cheap and available in the UK, but it required the dismantling of the monitor to install it. Also not really a viable option, as the monitors were brand new and this would have voided the warranty. The solution was staring us in the face, but it took us a while to put two and two together. Sam, whose day job involves using CAD software, could design in FreeCAD, and I could print his designs on my Ender 3. And so the fun began. In total, there were 46 iterations of the adapter model that we had designed. Around 10 of them I had part printed for test fittings, until finally we arrived at the finished product. This final product exemplifies what is great about 3D printing in my opinion. We could not find an adequate solution that we was happy with, so by combining our skill sets we set out to make something that was exactly as we wanted, and I think it's safe to say we succeeded, as we realised that we can't be the only people that needed something like this that was a reasonable price and good quality. Our idea was validated when we decided to print a few extras to sell on eBay, and within a month we sold 7 to customers around the world. Now we had had a taste of practical 3D printing, we wanted to continue this venture and was very quickly given an opportunity to do so. In case you hadn't realised, I'm a bit of a nerd, and I love VR gaming. I had an Oculus Rift S, an Oculus Quest, and more recently purchased an Oculus Quest 2. Having three VR headsets, I now needed a storage solution that was practical, and saved space. So I decided to look at wall mounting, but once again was faced with solutions that either didn't fit the aesthetic I wanted, or were cheap but very utilitarian, I wanted something that would look good, work well, and fit within my office aesthetic. Working over a few sessions with Sam, we designed a wall mount that was functional, looked good, and was also compatible with all my headsets and the third party head straps that I use. There were a few challenges to overcome, such as the bed size on the Ender 3, and wanting to have multiple colours in the design, and how to hide the screws. We ended up having the arms print separate to the body, use the screws to go through the holes in the body and arms to hold them in place, and then we actually used magnets in the Oculus logo to attach it to the base, which had the benefit of not only hiding the screws, but also making the logo a separate print to the base, meaning no changing filament mid-print to get the logo a different colour. If you would like to see the full video of this design process, then head over to the Jester Engineer channel, the link will be in the video description. The final result looks quite good I think you'll agree, and now I have a practical and good looking solution to store my VR headsets. This whole process has inspired me to think about all the times I've bought something that wasn't quite right for what I needed, but I accepted that it was the best solution I could find at the time. And now I'm excited to share this process with you. If you are enjoying this video then you can let me know by hitting that like button, 
and leaving a comment. If you want to see more of my journey in learning 3D design and printing, then you can always subscribe. And if you want to be notified of future uploads, then hit that bell icon. I am still at the very beginning of this 3D printing journey, but I hope that this video has also inspired you to not settle for something that just works, but to start thinking about what the ideal solution would be. With 3D printing becoming more and more affordable, we're on the verge of a manufacturing revolution. If you can dream it, you can make it. Until next time, take care and have a great day.